Why do people want to press those emotion buttons in other people? Why do people swear? And one of the reasons why uh, it's been so difficult to come to an answer to this question is that it doesn't have one answer. Uh, I think it has five answers. There are five distinct ways in which people swear. Uh, one of them is uh, what can be called dysphemistic swearing, the case in which taboo words are used in their literal sense to refer to some object or activity. Uh, the difference between referring to something as shit or feces, or fucking versus copulating, or cunt versus vagina. Now, you all know what a euphemism is. The idea behind a euphemism is we have to talk about this for some specific purpose, but let's avoid thinking about how awful it is. Now, the term dysphemism refers to the exact opposite uh, phenomenon, namely, I want you to think about how awful uh, this is. And the best way to appreciate it is to think of, of consider the uh, 34 euphemisms for feces in contemporary American English. Now, people don't like to think about feces any more than they like to uh, touch it or smell it. Uh, nonetheless, we are <coughs> incarnate beings. Feces is a part of life. And every now and again, you have to confer on what to do with it. In order to make this possible while making it perfectly clear to your listener that you're not raising the subject in order to gross them out, you can reach for one of a set of euphemisms in the English language, uh, each of them specific to a context. So there are generic terms like waste and fecal matter. There are formal terms from Latin like feces and excrement. There are terms that you have to use with children during <laughs> toilet training, like poop and doo-doo. There are terms that you use during toilet training talking about diapers, like soil and dirt. Terms appropriate for a medical context, like stool and bowel movement. Uh, dealing with animals requires a, a large set of terms, depending on whether you're referring to large units like pats or chips, small units like droppings. Uh, the context is scientific, as in scat, or agriculture, as in manure or guano. And this, in this uh, day of uh, universal recycling, the need has arisen for a term to refer to human feces recycled for use as fertilizer. And so we've seen in recent years night soil, human ure, and my favorite, human biosolids. <laughs> it kind of leads you to wonder why everyone makes so much of a fuss over the fact that Eskimos have a couple of dozen words for snow. <laughs> anyway, we need these euphemisms. And if someone were to select the wrong euphemism in a given context, the results would certainly be peculiar. Uh, for example, I think you'd be taken aback at your next medical appointment if the nurse said the medical lab will need a doo-doo sample. <laughs> or if you... Uh, Open the gardening section of the paper, and it said, for plump tomatoes, fertilize your plants with cattle bowel movement. <laughs> well, uh, we also need dysphemisms for those moments in life where the point for politeness has passed, and you really do want to rub your listener's face in how awful something truly is. The English language gives you the means to do that as well, such as, will you pick up your dog shit? <laughs> or... The plumber was working under the sink, and I had to look at the crack in his ass the whole time. <laughs> or, so while I've been taking care of the kids, you've been fucking your secretary. <laughs> uh, strong words for uh, occasions where a strong emotion has to be expressed. Well, those are literal uses of taboo expression, but of course, swear words are used in a much wider range of circumstances, such as abuse of swearing, where these words are used in a metaphorical sense to intimidate or humiliate someone. Now, the scholars who study cursing in the world's languages, maledicta, have noted uh, the sheer ingenuity that goes into the crafting of uh, obscene curses in the world's languages. And indeed, all of the classic poetic devices, metaphor, imagery, connotation, alliteration, meter, and rhyme, are put to full use in the crafting of obscene imprecations. Uh, for example, people use metaphor to liken people they don't like to bodily effluvia and their associated organs and accessories, as when you call someone a piece of shit, an asshole, a dickhead, a prick, a schmuck, and so on. Uh, you can advise people to uh, engage in undignified activities, uh, such as eat shit, shove it up your ass, or fuck yourself. 
You can accuse them of being the kind of person that habitually engages in undignified sexual activities. And for every undignified sexual activity, there is a, an obscene imprecation, such as incest, motherfucker, sodomy, bugger, fellatio, cocksucker, masturbation, jerk and wanker. And my favorite is from bestiality. Uh, and this is a curse that hasn't been in use in English for several centuries, but I would like to see it revived. <laughs> So the next time someone steals the parking space that you've been patiently waiting for, I suggest that you advise them to kiss the cunt of a cow. Uh, last used in 1585, but I think due for a revival, because not only does it bring some fresh imagery to this rather uh, cliched uh, domain, but also has a rather pleasing meter and alliteration. Well, one step even more abstract from, abu from uh, abusive swearing is idiomatic swearing. Strange expressions like shit out of luck, get your shit together, piss poor, pissed off, my ass, a pain in the ass, sweet fuck all, what the fuck, where it's completely unclear what those words are actually doing in those expressions. Well, what they're be doing is they're being used simply for their ability to ping people's emotions, emotion buttons, to arouse the listener's attention, to assert a macho or a cool pose, or to express informality, to say this is the kind of circle in which we don't have to watch what we say. And related to idiomatic swearing is emphatic swearing, such as Bono's, this is really, really fucking brilliant, and similar forms that I've written down, like he thinks he's a fucking scoutmaster, uh, Rip Van fucking Winkle, <laughs> and so on. Now, there, we all know people who uh, perhaps overuse emphatic swearing in their speech, leading to a, a speech style called fuck patois. <clears throat> As in the story of the soldier who said, I come home to my fucking house after three fucking years in the fucking war, and what do I fucking well find? My wife in bed engaged in illicit sexual relations. <laughs> Then there's cathartic swearing, the strange phenomenon where when some misfortune suddenly befalls you, you, you cut your thumb together with a bagel, or you knock a glass of beer into your lap, uh, the topic of your conversation abruptly switches to sexuality, uh, excretion, or theology. <laughs> well, what's happening there? If you ask people, they say, well, it releases tension. It, uh, it lets off steam. The hydraulic theory of the emotions. Uh, but unfortunately, neurobiologists tell us that there isn't literally a boiler filled with pressurized fluid in the, in the brain and a network of, of valves and pipes. They're just brain cells that fire in patterns. And a more neurobiologically plausible theory is the rage circuit theory, according to which mammals have evolved a reflex in which when the animal is suddenly injured or confined, it will erupt in a furious struggle, accompanied by a sudden angry noise, presumably to start and or startle or intimidate an attacker. And any of you who have sat down on your cat are well familiar <laughs> with this, uh, this reflex. The idea is that it, humans have inherited this reflex, but since our vocal tract is also under the control of the language system, we don't just yelp or howl, but articu articulate our howl using an aggressive a uh, word with negative affect that we ordinarily inhibit ourselves from producing. Well, I think there's a lot of uh, truth to the rage circuit theory, but it can't be the whole story. And that's because cathartic swearing is conventional. As I mentioned, you have to learn what to shout out in the particular language that you speak. Uh, also, not only is it specific to a language, but it's appropriate to the kind of misfortune. If the cause of your distress is another human being, uh, such as being cut off in traffic, you might shout out asshole. But if you yourself have knocked a glass of beer into your lap, you'd probably yell something else. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, maybe are you stupid asshole? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this uh, gives rise to. Uh, what Irving Goffman, the great sociologist, called the response cry theory, according to which cathartic swearing is communicative. It conveys to a real or virtual audience that we're currently in the throes of some strong emotion, one that we can barely control. Uh, and as such, it's like other response cries in the language, like aha, mm, whoops, wow, yes, and yuck, which also signal a sudden onset of an emotional reaction. 